Welcome to Timelines, episode 178. Today it's Open Saturday and it's all about tech, media, and money. Okay, folks, when we do not have a guest, I like to do like a little 10 minute short about what you can do with new media or netcasting, podcasting. First of all, what is netcasting? Well, netcasting is podcasting, which is an RSS feed basically hooked in with like YouTube being video graphics, live streaming like we're doing now on Blab, as well as creating a blog. So you can add on to that, but those are the basic four functions of what a netcast is. And in fact, netcasting, the, de the best definition of netcasting comes from a, a book I have here. Okay, we're going to read this definition of netcasting right out of ENC, Connecting North Carolina to a Better Future. Okay, the definition of a netcast. What is a netcast? Netcast is created or delivered delivery of digital media content, audio or video, over a data network in either real-time streaming or time-shifted download format. The data network is usually the intranet or the internet. So that's this 2007 out of this business pub. It's pretty much right on, and people really haven't caught up. They heard here podcasting but they don't hear netcasting. And that's how I think Blab is changing things. I'm actually finding easier to build an audience to send out information using some things like Blab, or at least starting with Blab. If you want a podcast, there's about 100 things you have to do, and you have to do it in a certain order. So it does take some time to get that podcast up. Plus, you're going to have to pay a minimum of $5, probably have some place to host it. That is $5 a month to have some place to host it. So webcast defined. A webcast is created and deliver delivery of digital media content, either audio or video files, over a data network in real-time streaming format. And finally, podcasting. Podcasting is a netcast that delivers syndicated media content over a network in a downloadable, time-shifted format. So what you can do here is we can create a streaming webcast with a live audience in Blab, then we can save it, we can edit it, and then we can upload it to a host provider like Lips. And you can actually upload it on your own website, but it's limited to how well that will perform because depending on your website and how many downloads you get. Okay, the next question, we sort of looked at netcasting, talked about what it covered, but now once we've put it out there. Why would I not just want to do a podcast? Some people are purist. They just want to do a podcast. Well, they don't want to be seen. They just want to talk. They want to edit and they want to get their message out or they want to read something. And podcasting can be very popular. And you really want to focus on the, just the listener and that listener, whether they're driving a car or working and they don't have the visuals. So one negative is when I create a podcast using Blab, sometimes especially when I do interviews, we're talking about things that we see each other or can hold up or do something. So that might throw off the listener just a little bit. But I think the gain of doing everything, I think, is, is greater because you reach more people, can go more go viral in different places. Like I said, I've never had 2,700 people listen to one of my podcasts. I've had like five or 600. But I have had 2,700 people come through a blab. And that's that political blab on Sunday night, which is well put together. And it's also starting to grow on the podcast. So it's driving people to one place. The other reason what you might not, a podcaster sort of doesn't like to do YouTube and blab and the other things, they believe, which it does, it takes away from their iTunes downloads. And if you're making money through advertising, you have to have... If you, at least 3,000 downloads to make any money per se. You can do some local advertising. But they feel that it takes away from those downloads and just iTunes. And they also want to focus just on marking that iTunes. But what I do is on my web pages, I've got the iTunes feed in the top. And then underneath that, I've got both the YouTube and the Blab. Now, YouTubes never get a whole lot of downloads. They get a few because they're sort of discussion talk. Blabs actually do pretty well. And then iTunes generally gets more unless you get a great blab and then blab actually like I did last week on meet the voter. 
Hey, here's another thing is it takes more work to create a podcast because you've got to take the sound. You got to work the sound. You got to upload the sound. There's about a hundred different things you have to do. None are, none are overly difficult, except maybe getting the sound right. But when you do a blab, you can just get there, hit record, pause. It actually does a pretty good job with the sound. You just get that $50 mic at ATR 2100 and you'll do okay. I mean, get that good sound, record, practice, rehearse. The fastest way to get good at a podcast is to do a daily blab. And you learn how to speak and talk and work with people that way. And it costs you only your time and that computer and microphone. Right. So Mike's favorite quote is whether you think you can or think you can't either way, you're right. I could do a whole show of just quotes. So when next person wants to come up, give their quote on the right side and they can come up and just give the quote and drop off or stay on. Commander, what's your quote? My belly, keep, it buzzing. keep it buzzing. I like that one. Mm. Hey, okay, Hi Yella just dropped in, be the hero of your own movie. So my second question would be is, how do you live by that quote that you like best? Now, Mike, what's that next quote? Well, the other quote I wanted to put up, and, and it was apropos to kind of what we're going through with the, with the team, was if you're going to play, play to win. Um, and what, what kind of uh, rang true for me is, you know, I've coached girls for a long time. Um, and they tend to have a little bit of a different mindset than when I coached guys as far as their tenacity and their uh, vision or their focus on, uh, on the activity. And so we were talking about that yesterday was, um, you know, you're putting this time, you're working hard, you're trying to learn your skills, and now you got to turn up the intensity and carry that over onto the, game, onto the field. So if you're going to do all this work, if you're going to play – Hey, let's play to win, you know, so. Hey, Mike, I got sad news for you. I got this guy coming up. There's a PhD that says that he had this quote before you. I, I'm sure. <laughs> and that's why I, I did not put my name or anything on it when I posted it on Instagram, because I said it didn't sound that original, but it was just kind of appropriate for um, the girls and what we were talking about. So this guy's got a lot of quotes. So who knows, you know, a quote. I've seen a lot of Franklin's quotes requoted and taken by other people. And who know if, who knows if Franklin actually really created those quotes or he overheard other people talking and took that idea and sort of just was the first to publish it. I think probably a lot of Franklin's quotes are credited to him because he was the first to publish those quotes, you know, cause he had his own publishing company, old newspaper company and book printing company. So it's a interesting discussion. Hey, hey, here's another topic for today. Just something to think about is there are no secrets per se. And what is copyrighted and what's not copyrighted? You can copyright your name, your company, like netcasting101.com is copyrighted and really shouldn't use that. But if you have my ideas or my questions or anything of that nature, that's okay. That's all open to everybody. You want to do a, a formatted talk show and do exactly like me, I can't stop you. No one can stop you. And if anybody gives you a hard time for doing it, just blow them off because yeah. take, take, take a car, for example. You won't, unless you add to it and create value, it's not going to succeed. So you take someone's idea and you improve on it. We keep on improving on ideas and that's okay to copy those ideas. Just don't take their, their trademark name. That's the only thing you can't do. So here's an example, the car. Did Henry Ford invent the car? No, he didn't invent the car. I don't know who invented it because there are all sorts of st Stanley steamers, all sorts of different pieces of transportation. What Henry Ford did is figure out the assembly line and how to make a better, cheaper, less expensive car and one that the population uh, could use. And that's what, how it grew. Did, um, for example, did, did uh, oh, what's his name? I know, Ro uh, Rockefeller. Did Rockefeller invent gasoline or kerosene? You know the Rockefeller story, probably living up where you live. That part of the, well, you'd have to be up further north. <laughs> but well, uh, and Yeah, and east. And east, right, northeast. But Rockefeller basically was a worked as a an accountant for a trade company on the Great Lakes when he was a young person. And one of the commodities they started selling was some kind of lubricant oil product that only came out of where he was located. And it was tar and sap and oil. And then they figured out how to, someone figured out how to distill it or refine it, create kerosene. Kerosene made lanterns. 
And that's really, really sold kerosene initially. And he made a lot of money selling kerosene as a commodity. And then he started figuring out transportation systems. And then he got lucky because, you know, the, in his lifetime, the demand for the automobile came out. And he, that's where he made his billions. By the way, right before the demand for the automobile came out, he was forced to break apart his company into about six or seven different companies. Because of that, he made even more money because people could, it really, it, you know, took off. But the point there is that Rockefeller just took a product and made it better and, and put money back into it and researched it. So there are no real ideas. You just take an idea and you improve on it. And don't let anybody give you a hard time for copying something or taking an idea. So anyway, that's my thought. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah you you got to be, yeah. You, I, I guess I don't want to use the word careful, but yeah, there's, there's not a lot of uh, original content. There's a lot of repackaging. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, even if you if you want to dig deep into Tony Robbins, I mean, some of his basic things that he was teaching were there much longer. You know, he didn't come up with it. He just repackaged it. Right. Tony Robbins. Oh, you know, Earl Nightingale is one of my favorite guys. He started little yeah. CDs. You remember Earl Nightingale? I, we're Vince Lombardi guys, so we like Earl Nightingale. He sort of evolved from that. Yep. I hear people say quotes that I memorized as a kid through Earl Nightingale. And they're not crediting it to anybody. Um, I guess just uh, let's see what the mind. What's, what, uh, what's Earl Nightingale? He's got a lot of them. I got to stop and think. So one of his originals I've heard other people requote and not give him credit for is luck when is when opportunity meets preparedness. Preparedness. Yep. And that's one of my favorites. But I've heard it other directions. You have to go way back before that person and sort of do some reading and see where it evolved. Like I said, a lot of people have taken Franklin's quotes and re- redesigned them or put them out. But I do like the Mike Tyson quote. Which one's that? Uh, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. You know, in <laughs> combat and war, we, we studied the nth degree. We do make elaborate plans and all these resources. And some are really good, like what happens when somebody gets wounded, you got medevac coming in or you evacuate somebody. And those are standard things that we, we learn and learn and learn to do. But the, but the plan itself, the operational plan, how we're going to go into a village, we're going to come from here and here. It sort of works, but it always changes in the middle of the operation. Mm-hmm. Chaos of war. That's no, I, they, uh, who is it? I think Cuban, Mark Cuban, even threw that one out there last night on the Shark Tank. <laughs> oh, do you? I, I haven't seen Shark Tank in so long. I like to watch it. When is it on? What nights? Are Fridays. On? Friday nights. Uh, what? It's nine Eastern, I think. Here, I think it's at nine Eastern. So okay. But not to waver from that. I mean, I I love the show. I mean, my daughter, I mean, she loves it. uh, You know, loves it when the younger kids come on and stuff. But Mm -hmm. um, my wife, she was just talking about that. I think it's cunt. It's gotten so um, produced now. It's so. Yeah, I I think it's. um, Yeah, it's it's just so. uh, Well, I wonder if we can find it on Pluto. Hey, by the way, everyone out. Oh, TED Talks. Sorry, TED Talks. That's good. I was, I've been researching TED Talks. I did um, an episode, uh, one of the episodes I did about three episodes again, the uh, person I brought in talked about the importance of going and attending, not your, just your local TED Talk, but try to get a ticket to the national TED Talk, the one TED Talk that they have, which is up in Canada now. It costs $700. But he said, you go there, the people you meet, it's like a week's worth of events. It's amazing. By the way, Pluto, P-L-U-T-O dot TV. I've been watching it a little bit. Maybe you can watch the Shark Tank on Pluto. Yeah, I said uh, I, I've not been able to find the network stations. I can find a lot. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds, but. Uh, it's it's a- okay. What's the quote? This quote is by my uh, fa- my my um, uh, the, the basketball coach that I uh, that I uh, John, like. John, the best, Wood- John Wooden. Bob Knight. Oh, Bob, Bob Knight. Knight. Yeah, Bob Knight. Um, everyone wants to win, but not everyone is willing to prepare to win. Wasn't Bob Knight like crazy? Um, little history. They just, they just celebrated the 40th year of the 1976 team. And that's when I, I was, uh, I think a freshman or sophomore and I lived with the basketball players and they, they, they adored him. I mean, now, you know, that there was many facets of his life, so was he all there at all times? I don't know, but at least my experience with him, great guy. I mean, we used to practice right next in assembly hall, right next to the basketball floor. So I'd see him every day. And if we would, you know, we'd run around the back of the courts to get over to the uh, to the uh, training room. 
you know, he throw basketballs at us, say, get out of my gym. You know, <laughs> we're practicing. Yeah, I can see I throw chairs sometimes too. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what I got. Huh? Well, I'm going to tell you, I was at that game. Uh, that was, that was, uh, that was in the mid eighties. And I went back to watch that game. They were playing Purdue, which is a, you know, big rivalry game. Uh, Purdue and Indiana are only two hours apart. And, um, the whole place, you, you know, you, they, they put 19,000 people in that stadium and, and people don't know that there's a whole second level of assembly hall that you never see that are full. Um, and the whole place was quiet. They go, he finally, you know, went off the deep end. So, <laughs> that they, the, guy, you know, the camera got an angle on that chair going across yeah. the court. It's like perfect. <laughs> we thought you that was the end. No, it, it wasn't. But I mean, yeah, so we were, we were scared. But as far as the experience and I mean, that team, you know, was his was awarded or, or given the the uh, the the um, you know it's the best the best team ever. You know, I mean they were thirty and zero. No one's done it since. Um, but uh, but yeah, I lived with a couple of players from that team, and uh, and say I knew Knight. I mean he he was he was an adult. I mean I you was actually a, knew him. But you actually met him, huh? But oh yeah yeah. Well, I got a picture hanging in my uh, in my uh, my my sports room there. Me and, and the coach at one of his talks. We were. I heard he's pretty much normal when he wasn't on the court <laughs> or coaching. Well, he was, yeah, he was an intense guy. I mean, obviously he was an intense, you look at the you know, way he, he taught and our, my coach was the same way and they got along real well. You know, my coach was very, very intense and very, uh, you know, take no prisoners kind of thing. But, but yeah, I always loved that quote because uh, it was exact. Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody wants to, you know, begin to bring home the championship trophy, but are they willing to do the work that it requires to do that? Yep. Hey, you know, there was a discussion today. I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, we shifted a little bit. Best money quotes. Mike just had a good one. You want me to? Yeah, say it. That money talks and BS walks. So, <laughs> And mine was, show me the money. Uh -huh. Hey, thank Ahmed. Ahmed's up. Come on, Ahmed. Here is Mike's finance quote. We could have them in different areas. Sure. Yeah, no one's ever achieved financial fitness with a January January resolution that's abandoned by February. And I got that one from Susie Orman. Oh, Susie Orman, yeah. A lot of people don't I know a lot of people who don't like her. I don't know why. Well, I could tell you why I don't, but um yeah. what's the personality wanna... trait? But she's very successful and she's she comes across like bossy, maybe. Uh, she's a very, she's a very good salesperson, but I mean, some of her, from some of their strategies, cause I know some of her strategies, she does not abide by herself. So like pay off your debt. That's probably the base strategy. Well, uh, yeah. And there's, said, where, that's, uh, a whole other, that's a whole other conversation. I mean, and you, you know, having been in real estate, I firmly believe there's absolutely no significant reason to pay off your house. Oh no, you shouldn't. No, no, no. You should, you should save cash and have reserves. You want you want what we call um, runway out in front of you of money in reserve, and if you pay off your house, you can you can have a cash flow problem. That said, I think if you naturally pay down the loan, it's nice to have a house free and clear when you get older. No, uh, no, it's not. No, it's not because what's going to happen there is you're going to be paying more tax than you ever did true. because you do not have any deductions. True. I mean, you know, true. I can't get them anymore but like I know for us saying. personally we have a zero um an interest only loan yeah. so we get the maximum tax deduction every year from our mm -hmm. house but with that being said we have money sitting in an account that if they called the loan yeah. I could write the check tomorrow so uh, to me that's financial security I'm 100% with you what you said I have a house in California that's really nice much much nicer than where I live here in Reno I mean beautiful house Good reason to go back to Modesto is we know everybody and we got a great house and a gated community. It's got a three and a half percent loan. That's like a bond. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big, beautiful house. We had it rented to a doctor and now somebody else. I mean, we've got way too, by the way, we're, we're ha house rich ourselves. So, and I'll tell you, having a 15 and a 16 year old, having a 13 year old and a 16 year old girl, 15 and a half, and both in gymnastics mm -hmm. is like the most expensive thing I've ever can imagine. Very My son. My son wrestled and like it was Levi's t-shirts and high school wrestling. Oh yeah. There's no cost. I mean, we spent all day on Saturday at wrestling matches. Yep. That was fun. <laughs> and he, he do like five uh, in a tournament. You do like at least wrestle five times. Well, you know, I was just, they got some big tournament going on here and I, I was just kind of reading some of the local kids and, 
and yeah, they, they were there all day yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then it said, you know, the, the, the preliminary round started today at 930, but then the championships are at 545. You yeah. know? So, I, I mean, met more people in my town from wrestling and you could possibly imagine. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really nice. But no, I, yeah, we, I could talk about that. I mean, I am a strong believer of that. I like, I set my mom up that way. That's one of her large, her big, that's her only deduction is her mortgage. Oh yeah. yeah mortgage. Yeah. You know, I, she's I, able, the money she's able to pull out of her annuity, that's or her, her, let's just say IRA mm-hmm. um, uh, is offset by the mortgage deduction. So she's being able to pull out her taxable income and not have to pay tax on it. Let, let me tell you a formula, get rich over your lifetime. And you don't have to make a ton of money. Have a normal job. This is like goes contrary to entrepreneurism. Have a normal job, but we, be an entrepreneur. Have a side hustle. And your side hustle can be a couple of things, but the one I recommend first is slowly but surely. Don't overextend yourself. Buy a three bedroom, one bath, two bath house, brick house. Keep it fixed up, painted, rent it out. Get up to break even cash flow. Get some money in reserve, then buy another house. And if you buy one every two or three years, and you got a good paying job. And you live in, and don't over the house you live in should not be a mansion. It's better to live in a smaller house and have other yep. smaller houses. Yep. Because I made that mistake when I was young. I made um, when I got in the military after nine years, just on a young officer's pay, and it wasn't much when we started. And I had flight pay too, but we were worth three hundred twenty thousand dollars. When I got out, I owned one house free and clear on Tybee Island. It was just temporary because we bought it in foreclosure and all in cash. I subdivided, finished the house. Is on beautiful. I wish I kept that. That house went to eight hundred thousand dollars. I sold it for one hundred five, mm-hmm. because when the internet hit the island, it skyrocketed. It really became in demand. Mm-hmm. The barrier island, and then I took that. I and then I had and I made my first money in Boston. I bought a, a, a two small brick buildings, and well, actually it was eleven unit. I got two of the eleven units. A Navy officer got the other ones. We convert them to condominiums. I made a hundred thousand, and I went overseas for a year. When I came back, my wife sold them because we got married before I went overseas. And I made a hundred thousand dollars in profit. At the time, as a lieutenant, first lieutenant, and young captain, I think I was making thirty-two, thirty-three thousand dollars base pay. So I made like three times my base pay. Took that money, bought the foreclosure in Tybee Island when it was Hunter and Maryfield. Then I bought two more houses out in Orange County, California, mm-hmm. where my family's from, and they're brand new. And I had to put five percent down. Those were great investments. So anyway, I sold those and started my design, build, construction. I've never been richer when I was first getting out cash wise. And yeah, no, I talk to people about that all the time, especially, and I hear that, and that's why you know going back to what we were talking about about doing a show, because I hear that from these aspiring entrepreneurs who are making money. I paid my house off. I paid my house off, and I said that was the biggest mistake you could have made. As long and, as you keep cash in reserve though somewhere. Well, yes, but but even still, that, that's the perfect way. You know, have the money in reserve to pay it off. But but no. but, but the uh, but the next best is you know pay put the minimum that you can do, yeah. uh, benefit from the interest that you can use as a tax deduction, and you know build that reserve up over time. But um, you no, know, houses have been appreciating nicely now. The only time people were hurt was like in two thousand six, late six, seven, and eight. Nine. Oh, yeah. No, we uh, we had pulled all the equity out of a house at that time, got the max, which today there's no equity in it because of the, the price had dropped. But you know what? That money's working for me because yeah, I got, you got work and don't spend it all. No, I make uh, on the side accounts, I make uh, pretty close to 7% tax free. Wow, every year. really good. Yeah. You're sort of in that business, though, being around insurance, you're around people who do securities and well, this is, I uh, know I use life insurance policies. I, I have nothing in the market because I don't know if you saw yesterday the mark. This, oh, this, I saw that huge dumped. Yeah. So I, I yeah. will, I, and I'll, 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 pre, I'll bet I'll make 7% come next year, even though, it, yeah, I have nothing in the market. Zero. Yeah. I, I don't own any mutual funds, no stocks. I got a love hate re- relationship with the market. I've made money in the market. I've lost money, but it, it's a full, you know, when you're doing the market, it's a full time job. I, I told you, I mentioned a book you got to get is Pirates of Manhattan. Got to oh, read that book. Is that the, what you are talking about yesterday? Yes. Pirates of Manhattan, like Manhattan, New York. Pirates of Manhattan. Get what, that book. What book have you gone? What book? What movie have you gone and seen? Have I seen? Yeah. Well, and it, and it just it just emphasized it when I went to the, the big short, which is the it's up for Academy Award. So. I strongly urge people to go see that. Now, there, I think there's some entertainment value in there, but uh, the the message is very clear. So, what's the message of the Big Short? 
that uh, we are not in control of a lot of what goes on in the financial world. So as you, as the independent investor is trying to uh, gain the system, you will never gain the system. Uh, the house yeah. always wins. The, every, yeah. The house always wins. Yeah, because they know ahead of time they can pull it real fast. Well, let me tell you something. There was, uh, with everything being electronic now, and there was a very large lawsuit against a financial company, they were able to with, get by one hundredth of a second. They were able to get information that quick that they could make their trades before they went to the next level of people making trades and were making an obscene yeah. amount of money. I mean, what they were doing is basically illegal. Yeah. But uh, that's why I said we're not going to win. By the time you hear about that big stock tip, it's it's already gone. The opportunity is already gone. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I tell people if you want to, you know, if you want to legalize Las Vegas, uh, that's what the market is. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I mean, the whole the whole four hundred one k all that stuff is a big ruse. I mean, we're seeing it now. People are not are walking away with maybe what they put into it, but certainly not a lot of growth. You know the are most. There, are there exceptions yet? But there's a far more people that got hurt. I'm positive. We got Yella in, and he's got his success quote. And do you have a money quote too? Uh, no. Uh, save more than you spend. <laughs> That's a good money quote. That's a great one. Uh, the one that I like as far as uh, motivational would be to be the hero of your own story. And um, I've been living and that's not my original quote. That's actually Joe Rogan. I don't know if you know who that is. He's mm -hmm. a, a comedian and uh, does a podcast. Huge podcaster. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've been kind of living my life by that quote. You know, he talks about how at the beginning of a lot of these hero movies, you know, he the guy's down and out. He wakes up with, a, you know, pizza crust on his chest and an old dirty shirt and everything like that. And something happens where he decides, you know, I got to change this. And, uh, you know, he starts exercising, you know, he can only do a couple of, this is where the montage starts and he can only do a couple of push ups and stuff. And he's maybe he's just trying to rekindle a relationship with his family and he's trying to talk to his daughter or his son and they're blowing him off and everything like that, but he just keeps on going and slowly, but surely by the end of the montage, He's knocking out, you know, 50 push-ups. He's doing the pull-ups and everything like that. He's, you know, pushing his daughter on a swing, and she's giggling and laughing. And you just have to live your life like that. You have to pretend that there is a, a movie crew there, and they are filming you, and you are just step-by-step, moment-by-moment, trying to make the right decisions to – to be the hero of your own story. And like some of the steps that I've taken, and I started this, by the way, I heard someone say something about this earlier. I started this before the new year because you know, there's that whole thing. Uh, you start in January and then by February you, you've given it up. So I actually started this about, I'd say about four months ago. Uh, I started with uh, not going to fast food restaurants. I've slipped up a couple times. It was, uh, <laughs> Those water burgers are uh, are pretty damn delicious, but um, definitely not doing that. I've been very successful in my candy problem. I don't have bags of uh, hard candy and chocolates in my house anymore. Uh, a month and a half ago, I started going to a gym that just does a. It's just a class. It's a half hour class where they work on it. What's it called? It's called a um, muscle confusion, where you just do lots of different exercises. And you do different kinds. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be the hero of my own story so that, you know, in a, in a year I can look back and say, gosh, you know, I really changed and turned around my life uh, in, in uh, 2015. So hopefully by the end of 2016, uh, I'll be able to get my tickets to the gun show. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I will have uh, also improved in my my work situation i'll feel healthier and uh moving in a more positive direction even though i wasn't moving in a negative direction before i just felt like i was i was kind of standing still so yes that's my quote be the hero of your own story bill how are you showing up in two boxes there 
That was the strangest thing. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's um, this uh, Alec, Alicia Kurt, whatever her name is. Sorry about that. She came up initially. It must have been someone else. Just I checked the um, Twitter account. It's it's something strange. So. Let me see. Oh yeah, there's nothing. The blabism. On. Hey, sorry about that. That was a good. Uh, I'm I trying mean, to work on my podcast, which is very hard because I am so. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Quiet for a second. I wanted to put a gap in here so I can find this. Okay, go on. Um, I, I I've been trying to get this whole podcast thing uh, going. It's really hard for me because I am a. Uh, I am a newbie when it comes to utilizing the technology that's around me. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, I didn't get um, certainly didn't get into social media until about maybe about a year ago. Uh, started using my computer and, uh, and and trying to understand how it all works and stuff. Like I said, I'm really new at this, but just been kind of gathering up the equipment that I know that I need for a podcast and trying to figure out how to, how to use garage band. And you don't need anything more than what you have right now. You've got this and this to start and you need a $5 lips account. You're done. And just make a five little clips for yourself. Hmm. I think I've, you did. Tell, yeah. And then, then the next thing to buy is the ATR 2100. Not, not a condensing mic. Right. But condensing is yeah. okay if you have a room with uh, foam all over the place. You're, I mean, then you go to the next level. But you experiment by just doing one. And, you know, it, it costs you 5 bucks a month to keep a, a, a lips and five. And you start with a $5 account. Right. And slowly you learn. And you learn that, hey, you want to make them a certain size, the MP3s. You want to make them as small as possible, 64, I do, 64 MIPS. 96 is recommended. I actually go down to 64, and it's fine. But I can get more on uh, – a feed and it loads faster for people on their podcast. See, those are all the things that I, I need to learn. Cause like what you just said is like Greek to me. I was just like, uh, okay, I don't understand the Lipson uh, account. Yeah. Um, just, just, just don't just put a podcast up and screw up, put anything up there. MP3 is the recording is that what you lo- upload. Okay. So on, on iTunes, you can make an MP3. I don't use, I haven't used iTunes in a long time. It's a good platform to start though. I don't like the newer ones. I say I learned the old way, and I can't, like, learn the new iTunes. But just start. What do you want to make your uh, show on? Well, my plan is that um, I have a buddy who is uh, fairly conservative, but I enjoy talking to him because both of us can hold our points of view without mm-hmm. it turning into a yelling match, and no one is trying to offend the other. And, and sometimes the conversations are, are pretty funny. So what we thought we would do is uh, he's got a pool table in his garage and we could just record us having, you know, doing what we normally would do, which is, you know, sit around his pool table, play pool, drink beer and talk politics. And uh, I was thinking that that might be pretty entertaining. There's, there's times where we're, we're belly laughing and there's times when we're having some pretty serious conversations. I thought maybe just record it and throw it up there, see what happens. Hey, I just realized something. Meet the Voter, which is my most popular show, 2,700 downloads last week, is on the same time as the Democrat debate this week. I think it's 17th. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh. Ah, bummer. So what you do is you have your, your TV hooked into Blab, and and then you guys can commentate uh, yeah. as the as the debate's going on. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop and pause and talk about it a little bit. We can watch it. And then talk about we could have our initial discussion. We start at five thirty, so the debate comes on at nine. We can get actually the the iTunes portion done, quite a bit of it done ahead of time, and then talk about it. I don't know. The problem is I'm not sure how to hook. You can't really rebroadcast through Blab. You're not supposed to. So you can tell people. You know, you get people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be. And I, the best is, thing to do is give them the link, a link to watch it. Let's see what happens when I open up this link on YouTube. No, it was interesting, uh, Bill. I was watching a Periscope with the, the attorneys yesterday out of uh, San Francisco at the Periscope Summit, mm-hmm. and it was interesting. Uh, Mitch Mitch Jackson was one of the uh, panelists. I, I did not know the other gentleman, but um, it was very interesting what they were having to say as far as where the legal aspects of this live streaming is going to go. Oh, all the litigation is going to evolve from this stuff? Uh, 
It's going to be oh. huge. Every time you have some kind of image on there, they're going to try to nab you. There'll be so much. Some attorney will file like thousands of, of claims against just small people to get two to five hundred dollars from them. That's going to yeah, happen. I mean, I've, already, I've already heard people that uh, they've been um, attacked. You know, for say, hey, you're, you're using something you're not supposed to, and get a letter. I know a lot. Of, got, I know. I know at least one. I know at least one very successful podcaster who got a little note from his website, and the attorney wanted I forgot three to seven hundred dollars. Made him settle. He finally settled for under three hundred, but they just wanted to shake him down for money. I mean, technically, you're not. You can't take someone's picture and put it on the site. That's one thing you can't do. You cannot copy someone's picture. But we've talked earlier about if you create a podcast, it's okay. Go find something successful and improve on it. You can use very similar questions and format and just make it better. Just figure out how to make it better, and you'll do well. Well, you yeah. know, I just thought of this. I just thought of this, and this happened to me. This was maybe longer than I can think, but it had to do with faxing. And I was doing some uh, some uh, fax blasts, and I get this uh, letter from this attorney, and he was a local attorney, he was suing me for $3,000 because of the whatever the law was here in Ohio. And uh, I had I had an attorney friend of mine that called a couple of times. Never Nothing ever came of it. I never did pay. I mean, but the, the guy was just sending a, a big net out there. And, uh, and seeing who uh, who would pay. Well, I had an ADA violation in one of the buildings I worked on, and it was we were in federal guidelines, but California made a new rule that they got rid of, and basically um, they said that if you, even though we're in compliance for federal compliance, and because there's rules that allow you not to have to change stuff until you do certain re major remodels, and we had the federal compliance, we were actually handicapped at that time. They changed the law, but then they went back and retrograded. And this one guy was sending out um, letters to everybody who hadn't come up to the current standards and wasn't citing the uh, handicap access issues, was citing a discrimination, that we're discriminating against people. So they're getting us on a civil rights issue. And they wanted $8,000 to settle. I said, no way. So $12,000 later, with the attorney, they filed court motions. What I wish I had done in retrospect is called the person directly up we said that they were discriminated against. Just call them directly because we did a lot of research into this too. And they got the wrong guy. I just come back from Afghanistan. So I took two weeks out and just did nothing but research this project. The guy had never been to the building, the site. He was suing us for discrimination. Yeah, so, never been there. So, yeah, there's going to be, a, uh, as they say, a big can of worms here. $12,000 uh, later in attorney's fees. As people are running around with all their special mics and handheld things and Oh, yeah, that too, just being out in the street, you know, um, what you can and can't. Well, you, let's say you, you got a picture of a, a logo, a, a logo behind you. you know, yeah. What's that? Hey, look, we just got Samantha from uh, from Ireland just jumped oh, in. Science, huh? Samantha, what time is it in Ireland? I'm going to guess, let's see, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., Samantha? Is it 9 p.m.? Am I seven hours difference? Oh, I like that. I like the X's. Thanks, Samantha. I like the X's. I have a question business. for you about um, on podcasts. There's some podcasts I listen to and I hear them <clears throat> playing music and I'm like, how are they able to do that if they're not paying? And that's got to be really expensive. Like I was hearing some Led Zeppelin and oh, you can't do that. No. Uh, some other songs. And I was just like, that's that's really expensive. And I don't think that they're spending that much on their their podcast. You can buy some licensing and you can have limited numbers, but it's really weird. They can charge you on downloads. So if your podcast has thousands of downloads within a period of time, you could be charged. Most of those contracts have, they're associated with uh, downloads mm -hmm. that you pay per download. So it can be very expensive. And they people don't understand, you know, people don't understand the podcasting world yet in the uh, traditional world. Um, Let's see if we can get Samantha on here and she can, us, she can give us some quotes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're looking for quotes. What's your favorite money quote? You know, I'm going to pause this because I was just put Samantha Kelly, the Twittering goddess. What's your quote? Why spend your whole life trying to fit in when you were born to stand out? Very good. Very good. Give me a second of silence. What, what's the next quote? Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. 
Oh, I've never heard that one before. Is that original? Audrey Hepburn. Oh, really? Mm. That's good. Mm. Wow. We were talking earlier. Is, is there any such thing as a original quote? Well, I did one the other day. Um, what did I say? Oh, uh, surround yourself with people who celebrate your successes, not people that try to put obstacles in your way. You've had that's that. My... You did that on the show. That was good. Yeah. I think I remember that quote. You, uh, yeah, you talked about that. Surround yourself with good people. I've heard. To go to my meeting, my AA meeting, uh, I go every Saturday night. And I go three times a week and keeps my head right. Very so, good. What seven time, and a what half time years later, I'm still here. <laughs> wow. That's a long time. Yeah. It's a long time so, to go to meetings. Well, no, you have to. You have to keep going because if you don't keep going, then, you know, you're, you're, you're not learning and you're not helping someone else that might come in that's new, you know. And they, they, oh, yeah, they yeah. look up to us because it's a program of attraction. And if they don't see people that are well and doing well, then it's not going to inspire them to keep going, is it? You know? No. I've had some people who I know have gone in family just for a couple of years, and they've done fine after a couple of years, and they've stayed, mm. stayed in good shape. But so that's Matt, true. Let me, let me share this with you. I am 10 minutes away from the house where Dr. Bill started his first meetings. <gasps> Right. No way. Oh, my God. I'd love a to go Akron, there. Ohio. Akron, yes. Ohio. Oh my God. You know, I'd love to bring my partner because we're both in it. Um, I'd love to bring my partner there as a surprise holiday or something. He'd love that. I'd love that. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, actually, do you want to say, Mike? Is that Wilson, Bill Wilson? Was he the guy that started it? I'm trying to think. I don't know the no. last I mean, I always, because I mean, there's always articles in the newspaper here, the anniversary dates and stuff. I always know it's Dr. Bill. and mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bill, you know, um, they, they started this, uh, the whole thing of Alcoholics Anonymous and they started it and in just in that town and they just started by helping each other. And then they realized that two people could help each other that were in the same boat. So basically it's a bit like business really. You know, you need support. You yeah, need to be able house. to bounce ideas off someone else. Yeah. Yeah, the house is uh, the house is still here. It's still here. Wow! And is it a huge tourist attraction? I I I can't say. I mean, it's just a normal size. Uh, you know, probably thousand fifteen hundred square foot house. So, and it's got a sign out in front of it and stuff. But I think there's different uh, anniversary dates, and uh, you know, there'll be yeah. things in the local in the paper here in the Akron. Uh, the Akron Beacon Journal. I mean, if you, you could probably go online and just, uh, that's the newspaper here, Akron Beacon Journal, and you could probably find <laughs> some information out about it. It's cool, though. I mean, all, there's a lot of good quotes as well that um, I've learned, Bill, in, um, in, in AA. You know, there's lots of things like, like, you know, the slogans, like, keep it simple, you know? Um, first things first. I mean, you could apply them to everybody, really, you know? Mm-hmm. I think I've seen, I think I got a copy of the, the house, but I'm not sure how to push it up onto the sidebar. Oh, don't the worry. Don't... House. Yeah. So, so Samantha, I want to ask you, what do you think of what Twitter did with us with putting the video um, up on the, uh, oh, yeah. just the links when you do a Periscope? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it's, I think it's good. It's great. You know, video is much more powerful anyway. So, you know, um, I heard all the they're doing a lot of changes on Twitter. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not mad about some of them, like the 10,000 thing. Um, I like the 140 characters, you know. Yeah, I saw that. But you got to get more 10,000 characters on Twitter. Hey, what do you think about, uh, I just recently heard about this. I don't know if you know who it is. It's uh, Milo. Oh, goodness. It begins with a Y. His last name is hard to pronounce. Um, apparently got his blue check mark taken away or apparently <gasps> yes, being affected and stuff. I don't like the guy. I think that he's silly and he's rude and stuff, but to take his check mark away, uh, it, it seems ridiculous. It seems quite, it seems quite silly. Um, I, like I said, I don't I, know. I suppose, <clears throat> but I suppose they're kind of, 
kind of representing Twitter in a way that like you're, you're kind of getting the stamp of approval off Twitter. That's the way I would look at it. I don't have one yet. I'm disgusted. I really want one. <laughs> um, but how do you get there's one? The, na- the name is there in the right hand side. I don't even look. Nobody knows how you get them. They just decide. Well, it's not about how the- many followers you have. It's not about. Like I know people with 300 followers that have a tick because they're journalists or whatever. You know, you have to be adding value. I think is the main thing. And if he wasn't adding value, oh, he was. He has got way more followers now. Like them actually taking the check mark away has just given him a tremendous amount of followers. He had a lot of followers, and for me, um, it's an easy way for me to find out if who I'm looking for is really that person. Mm-hmm. You know, because if there's no check mark, you know, in his case, it'd be easy to figure out because you put his name up and you look for the one that's got you know a million. Uh, followers and uh, that it's pretty easy to figure out but um, if they don't have a check mark there it could be someone that has more followers than you but it's not really the real person mm. Mm. You know? it seemed like a way of them kind of saying oh we don't like what you're saying so we're going to punish you we're going to put you in the corner yes. we're going to put yeah. you in the corner put your nose there <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'd but, like one someday, but I think it's just a vanity I'm, thing for me. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to be cool. <laughs> so, how do I know if this is the real site? I don't know if this will put it's Jenna Bush's site. Well, here I, too. While you're doing that, I wanted to share this. This was a really cool um, uh, oh, movie. Cool w, yeah. It's a great. My wife movie. had brought home. She's a. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. She's a pharmacist, and somebody had brought it in to her, uh, and we watched it. it. Was pretty interesting. So yes, yeah, so James, 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 so James Wilson, Woods James was uh, was Doctor Bill. So that's right. What's his last name? I don't think it's Wilson. It's a uh, Bill Bill what? W. See, we just say Bill W. We, like none of us know each other's surnames. Like I remember there was yeah. one guy sick in hospital, sure. and we went in to see him, and the person in the hospital said, "Well, what's his surname?" We were like, um. <laughs> John, who, John, who lived the John that plays the drums? <laughs> You're like, I don't know his surname. You know, yeah. that's the way it's supposed to be anonymous. Like, you know, I don't mind talking about it because if I can inspire another woman to kind of, you know, do what I did, exactly. then I don't mind talking no. about it. I'm nothing to w- be ashamed Wiki of. Wiki is about. magic. Mm. I just pulled him up in Wiki. It, he comes under Bill W under Wiki, but then you can figure out his name. There's some lovely um, quotes coming in there in the comments. Oh, yeah. What are quotes? Definitely want to look at the quotes. Lots of good quotes. Yeah, lively debate. I like that one. There comes a time. Oh. Go ahead and read it. There comes a time when you look into the mirror and what you see is all you will ever see. And you accept it or you kill yourself or you stop looking in mirrors. I like that. Oh my. <laughs> or, or you could look in blab. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do that. I check my hair. You know, I have to go to a mirror anymore. I just sort of check my hair. <laughs> right. That's a tough one. That's a tough quote. There was another one, one up there further. A lady put in. Hang on. I think it was a lady. Yeah, definitely get these quotes. Thank you. Where I think Roxanne's is pretty good. Yes. Tracking people with disabilities is the lowest uh, display of power I can think of. Morgan Freeman. Okay. I didn't know he had epilepsy. Do you notice a lot of these leaders have dyslexia or there's, there's always something there, isn't there? Uh, ADHD. Creative, creative there's always people. something. Yeah. Yeah. Creative people have a little well, bit I of told dyslexia. This, I told this story yesterday. Uh, a friend of our son who is probably 20 um, had an opportunity. He, he lived in uh, out west. But he had an opportunity to go to college here in Cleveland at a university called Case Western, which they refer to as the Harvard of the Midwest. Um, he left there after his freshman year because he was bored, ends up getting a huge job with Uber, and he was autistic and uh, did not carry on a conversation, but really understood, you know, he was a genius. So. Mm. Here, I'm going to put this in. I think a better way to do this is put this in question format from um, Jim. And let me flip it. Oh, can't flip it up there. But you get, you get what you 
you get what you inspect, not what you expect. I totally understand that, especially in the military. Inspections are like really big. I like the, the one other thing too is. Did you see oh, the I one from the Roxanne? Rock. Um, lo- no, and she has another one. Logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Einstein. Where is that one? I'm looking. You have to go back up a bit further. It was above. It was above her other one that she put in. Oh, that's a good mm. one. Einstein had some pretty good quotes. I think those were original. I got a feeling. Mm. Einstein. Yeah, I say so. <laughs> Well, we were talking about earlier about Ben Franklin did a lot of quotes, but he was a publisher, so he got credit for a lot of things because he published them. Right. He was he was a good writer too. I don't think he truly thought everything he he quoted and put out there may or may not have been original thought. And that brings us to nowadays, it's, there's not a whole lot of original thought because we create so much. We take bits of pieces and put things together like a car. Mm-hmm. A car, you know, can you imagine if someone would have uh, been in some kind of rule that the first person that made a car could patent it so no one else could make a car. Mm-hmm. That they gotta be careful with patent laws. That's why we have lots of different cars a manufacturing. <laughs> Look, well, I'm gonna I hop just, out because I have to get ready, right? But I just wanted thank to you, have Samantha, you saw you there. I said I'd say hi I'll, and lovely to meet you. I'll put you, you up on I I'm gonna I'm gonna make a podcast. So when you get up in the morning, I'll have your little quote on the podcast. Okay. Not your so, little quote, your beautiful quote. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks, Samantha. Bye. Good luck. Enjoy your meeting. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was nice. Samantha came up. Yeah. Different, different times of the day have different things going on. What time was it there? It was like nine at night. Uh, 730. 730. That's not said too it was bad. 19. It was 1920. That's the problem is when we do the show in the evening, like at six o'clock at night, it's like. So that would be two in the morning. Yeah. Cause it doesn't work for them. We moved this, uh, meet the voter to, to six o'clock on Sunday nights at five thirty this week. Well, look at the, is your map up on your uh, comment section? Look at all oh, yeah. the people in the, in Europe you got on here today. Right. Right. This time it's in the evening, you know, different times. Yeah. But if you do the meet the voter, we had 2,700 meet the voter and I wish I looked at the maps. We have another one up here. Another quote. Yeah, if you if you did it well, you weren't you doing your meet the voter at ten a.m. because I mean now you're looking at uh, six five five six o'clock over there. We're doing ten ten a.m. on Sundays or nine or ten or something like that. Nine nine a.m. on Sundays. But that but but Pacific or Eastern Pacific, which is twelve Eastern. And that would be um, when you're doing it. Yeah, but you know what? That's mostly American politics, so right. Right. So it sort of works. Then Americans don't even understand American politics. So you're going to bring somebody <laughs> over from. Yeah. I try to figure out um, Engl- English, the English, England, England's politics. I've watched that because I study politics. I mean, that's just one of my hobbies and being elected and, and actually helping people get elected. I sort of like to watch English politics and Canadian. You were saying earlier, <clears throat> you were saying earlier about the, uh, what if someone had uh, patented the uh, car? car yeah. and we wouldn't have all the other the other um, choices um, yeah. that we have. And I was thinking, you know, uh, pr- one thing I think that needs to happen is that people need to uh, recognize where that has been done in other in other ways, where maybe it's not a patent issue, maybe it's. Uh, people making laws that uh, hold mm-hmm. up competition. And one thing that pops immediately to my mind is that is uh, our fuel. There is a uh, Netflix um, program called Pump. And I think a lot of people don't recognize that, you know, petroleum is not a choice. You, you know, Exxon and uh, Shell and all these places, they sell the same product. Well, we don't have a choice of what different kind of product we can use. And the funny thing is, like I said, most people don't know, there's about six other things that you can use right now to fuel your car. And at most, what you'd have to do is uh, have a program installed into your car uh, where there's these other fuels that work uh, as good or better and can be produced easier. But the petroleum companies have had laws written where um, it's pretty much, uh, un- it's, 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 uh, I wouldn't say illegal, 
but the barriers to these other uh, fuels coming to market, uh, it's just too much of a hurdle for them. And it's all about having laws and regulations put in place that make no sense. Um, because I was yeah. watching. Go ahead. Yeah, I know it's highly regulated. Even the mixed and blended gas for the pollution. Mm -hmm. Ethanol, like eth I know the Midwest loves that ethanol. But what ethanol does, it dries up the cost of grain and corn and dries up milk a bit. And it's not as efficient as straight gasoline. I mean, that what you get out of it isn't that great. See, in that pump thing, they were saying that actually, um, and like I said, I, I've watched it a couple times, and it was a while back, so I may not be getting this exactly right, but they were saying that the, um, the stuff that they actually use for fuel is not um, – for human consumption or uh, animal consumption. No, no, no. When, uh, my family has dairies, uh -huh. and we have our own uh, silage systems. Right. We have acres where we grow silage and corn. They use that exact same corn and silage for ethanol. They put an ethanol plant in in our in our area. Oh, okay. And it, it it skyrocketed the cost of. Uh, luckily, we have our own. The one our that's own grain. The, the one that got the most attention for me is the. Uh, I think it's called methanol. They make it from garbage, from waste. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, uh, you yeah. mean to tell me we just stick garbage in the ground when we could make fuel yes. out of it? And apparently it's a really good fuel. It's what they use in um, uh, high-performance vehicles for, like, racing and stuff like that. Um, because it It's called, called waste energy. Yeah. So... Um. We built a waste energy plant in my community uh, from the uh, – and we've got a – we actually – there's two types of waste energy plants. There's a type where you get – I think it's methanol, not positive. But the other type is where you take your garbage and you actually burn it and you have scrapers and water coming down. You use that heat to create steam and then you create power. Mm -hmm. So one is – and, the, and the, it's not, not meth – it's methane. Excuse me. Methane is mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And cows – give out methane garbage creates methane same thing as cows that was another thing they were talking about is the, how there's these places where they have these uh these slurries i guess from from uh, uh pig waste and stuff like that and it's become mm -hmm. a problem and they're just saying you know that could all be used uh as fuel but they just stick it in the ground where it becomes a problem it's like well why allow it to become a problem well because there's so many barriers to them making it into a fuel. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something gross. It's not gross to the people I was with, but I spent 40 months of my life in Afghanistan out with the community population people, and they use everything in Afghanistan. They burn everything because they have to the heat and the cold. But you go to the Kalats, the little villages, kids would be making <laughs> patties at crap, and they put it against the the clot wall and let it dry, and it drops off, and then they burn those in the winter time. Mm -hmm. But they use human waste too, so they use everything. It comes down. They they make the little kids make the patties, stick them against the clot wall, they bake on the wall, they drop down, and they they burn them. They burn everything. I was in Kabul for three months. They burn plastic. I mean, I'm surprised I don't have some kind of cancer from living in Kabul. Right. I average lifespan in Afghanistan was 47 when we started. It's now 48. We've improved the quality of life. They, they die from all sorts of things. Oh, I imagine. Um, uh, the, the number one thing, they, they, they're they still, I think, the second most depleted nation in the world for poverty. And it's, um, oh, I know, I had INH. I had to take INH. It's uh, tuberculosis, TB. A lot of TB there. Well, you know, that's, that's good enough for success quotes, though. People are in here to hear success quotes and positive stuff. I know. We got some pretty neat people on here, so we need to get a couple of more quotes. We need more quotes, folks. Yeah, let's get off of this. I'm gonna, I don't want to record what I just read. Okay, okay, folks, this is the motivation today to say, what does it take to get somebody up on a podcast? It took $5. Yellow's going to be up on a podcast today. He's creating it on Blab. And that's going to be the uh, my podcast today. is going to be about Yellow getting up on podcasts with a few quotes. So it'll be another eclectic day of uh, <laughs> my podcast. But uh, we're going to, you know, the, the thing that you tell people like it, your numbers, your numbers, you can tell your numbers multiply because people send the podcast. Around. I see so, a few more. Yeah. If you subscribe, put over in the comments. Go section. We're going we're to do this new thing. We're going to go over. We got five minutes. 
But you, as soon as we leave here, I want you to go ahead and launch it. In fact, you know what I want you to do? Mm -hmm. I want you to launch this darn thing. Don't record it yet, but launch it while we're still on here. Mm -hmm. And then go and close this up. And we're going to stay on over here for a little bit. So you're going to launch. You're going to you're going to launch your pod. Do not shut it down. You don't need to make me co-host this. So if you so you don't lose it, you got four forty-seven. I'm trying Can to think. We, we need to make you need to make somebody a co-host. So go up right now and stay on here and launch it. We're going to get bad feedback, but I'm going to turn off my sound. So go ahead and launch it. Go ahead and start now. We end up being there by myself for a minute. No, just start now. I'm going to come over and be with you. I'm going to stay on here. So you start now.